Always got to test it. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Tom's in the kitchen. You That's right. That's <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> right. Hi. I'm Dr. Leonard Lee, I'm a cardiac surgeon, and today I'll be showing you some of our commonly used instruments for heart surgery. For every operation, we start with these accessories, and the first are the surgical loops or telescopes. These are three and a half times magnification, and these allow us to see very small pieces of anatomy in very clear manner. In addition, this is the surgical headlamp, which gives us a bright, very bright field of view so we can see every nuance of the anatomy. Probably one of the most dramatic instruments that we use is the sternal saw. And this is the instrument that allows us to go through the breastbone in the middle of the chest to get to the heart. It's very similar to a common jigsaw that you would use for home improvement. It has a safety mechanism, obviously, because it can be very dangerous. And we unclick the safety mechanism. And like any other oscillating saw, it has a throttle, which allows us to give very high power or very low power. And this is how we get through the breastbone. That sound gave me a very oh, visceral yeah. reaction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Years of training. <laughs> this is the Morse sternal retractor. And this is what we use to hold the breastbone open. And it gets inserted something like this. And then we can retract the sternum. which then will give us access to the heart. Then we use what's called the electrocautery bovi. This is one of the stars of the show, as well as one of the most commonly used instruments in all of surgery, and this is what we use most often during the course of any operation. This instrument allows us to both cut through tissues as well as cauterize small blood vessels so we can operate in a relatively bloodless field. So these tubes are called cannulas, and these are what we insert directly into the heart to divert blood away from the patient to the heart-lung machine, which will be life-sustaining while we're operating on a still and non-working heart. All these holes allow for the blood to leave the body and go to the heart-lung machine in an uninterrupted fashion. So anytime we need to make a new cut into a new part of a patient body, we use scalpels. So this is a 10 blade, and this is the scalpel that we use to make the initial incision at the beginning of surgery. This is an 11 blade, which is very sharp and very pointed and commonly used to make small stabbing types of incisions. When we make, need to make smaller cuts and more precise, we then use a 15 blade, which allows us to manipulate it much easier. And are we moving on to clamps? Are those clamps? This is a clamp, aortic cross clamp. So there are vascular clamps and non-vascular clamps. The vascular clamps have very specific types of jaws, which are called non-crushing. So the importance of non-crushing is that we don't want the cells that make up that particular part of the organ to be crushed or killed or devitalized because you're closing the clamp on it. The other clamps don't have that specialty. And so we use these often to hold suture or to hold areas that we are not as concerned about maintaining the viability of the cells. So this is our aortic cross clamp. The aorta is the big blood vessel off the top of the heart that feeds blood to the entire body. It's about three centimeters across, and this is used to occlude that blood vessel at the time of surgery. So if you imagine my fingers being the aorta, the clamp would be placed completely across the aorta and clamped so that there's no blood flow, but again, non-crushing, and you can see that I can put this across my fingers without killing my fingers. These are other wide ranges of clamps going small as this, we refer to as a mosquito, which is a very small clamp that can clamp very, very small blood vessels. All these clamps are used to hold things, whether it's tissue or sutures, that allow us to proceed with the operation. So commonly used sutures during the course of our operation, we often use up to 50 or 60 different types of sutures, but these are some of the more common ones that we use. This is proline. Proline is what's referred to as a monofilament suture, and this is permanent and stays in the patient's body forever. This is what we use to sew onto vessels, like the aorta, to hold things in place. Once it's time to sew the coronary arteries, the bypass is onto the heart. This is 7-0 proline, and you can see how fine the needle is, and you can see how fine the suture is. The suture is as fine as a human hair. 
And this is why we need to wear magnification at the time of surgery. We're often using this suture on blood vessels that are small as two millimeters in diameter and very, very frail and paper thin. So we want to be as careful as possible, make the smallest holes as possible so that we can minimize any sources of potential bleeding. At the beginning of the operation, we divided the breastbone. So we need a means to put that breastbone back together. And for that, we use stainless steel wires. And it's an extremely sharp needle and a very, very heavy needle driver. And this goes through the bone and is twisted and reapproximates the breastbone. These wires are permanent as well. People often wonder why our needles are curved. And the reason needles are curved is so that we can go through and come out on the other side without distorting the tissues. These are the instruments that we use for the coronary bypass part of the operation where we're sewing on the arteries on the surface of the heart. And you can see that they're all normal sized instruments but the tips are very, very fine. These are called micro pot scissors. And these are the scissors we use to open up the actual coronary artery. These are called mammary pickups. And these are the forceps that we use to handle the coronary arteries as well. And you can see how fine the tips are. So this is the robot room, and this is the room that was specifically designed to house the robot. So the use of the robot is to allow us to get into different body parts minimally invasively. The other advantage is that we all have tremors. The further we are away and the longer instrument that we're using, the greater the tremor that's transmitted to the tip of the instrument. So this takes all of that away. So this is the surgeon console of the robot, and this allows for binocular vision. You're using both eyes. It also gives three-dimensional view, so you have a sense of depth. The only part that's missing is the haptic feedback or the touch sense, but we have just about everything else. It also magnifies nine times magnification, and these casters allow for opening and closing of an instrument and rotation, just like your wrist, and allow for very large motions in my hands to translate into very fine motions at the tips of the robot hands. The pedals are used to help manipulate the left arm, the right arm, to move the camera closer and further and allows you to manipulate in three-dimensional space. So it's obviously a very complex instrument and the robot is obviously has multiple arms that we need to be able to manage all of them. So we only have two hands, but we have four arms. So we can switch from arm to arm by utilizing the different pedals that we have at our disposal here on the console. That's about it for us. If you'd like what you've seen today, check out more expert toolbox videos on Insider.